Hello and welcome back to what will be a review of the building of the Frere SE5A um, radio control model aircraft. We are now approaching the final stages and I thought it would be nice to give an overview of how things have gone. First of all, a glance at the specifics of the model. As you can see, it's a 53 inch uh, wingspan biplane which makes it quite compact radio is by way of four function and the suggested power um, for four and two stroke is given there I'm going for a four stroke OS 48 although it is possible to build this model going electric a little bit about the plan and the model the kit itself is very traditional. Parts for the formers and the ribs are from this um, 3 mil lightweight ply. And as you can see, there's no burning at the edges. This is pre-laser cutting. They have been die cut. And they're very, very accurate and press out very easily. That was actually quite a pleasing thing to see. The instructions are comprehensive, well written, with a little bit of quirky British humour thrown in, which makes for a fun read. Uh, anybody uh, building this model would be well advised to spend some time reading these very comprehensive plan uh, instructions. The plans are a little bit different. As you can hear, they are on a transparent film and the reason for that is they come in two sheets one for the fuselage and one for the wings but on the in the case of the wings only one wing for the upper panel one panel is shown and one for the lower and you need to flip them over to build the remaining wing for the upper and lower wings that didn't prove to be a problem at all but it's something that's worth bearing in mind you can see here from the instructions that it suggests one servo to drive the aerolons via a bell crank. I chose not to do that and I've actually installed two separate servos and I hope that will give a little bit more versatility in the setup when it comes to flying the model. So, how did I approach this build? Well, here's the model and I actually started with the fuselage it's a sport scale model it doesn't claim to be an accurate scale model however I thought that with a few a little additional details I could improve the scale look without totally redrawing the plans if you want to do that you build a different model I think so I built the fuselage first simply because I didn't want to trip over it all the wings, I always find get in the way and it's quite a, a big lump when all the wings are made. So I started with the fuselage and made the fuselage right to completion before I even started to the wings. In fact, I started with this Lewis machine gun. I started with this because there are a number of things that you don't get in the kit. You don't get the Lewis gun, um, or the Vickers machine gun, which is here. You don't get the figure. You don't get the wheels. Now, it's quite difficult to get your hands on the guns. So I decided to make this one rainy Sunday afternoon when I couldn't go flying using materials from the strap box. I quite enjoy that process. And this is just made out of bits of plastic tubing, bits of wood, bits of plastic card. So I made that first, I got uh, interested and then started with the rest of the build. I then moved on to things that I just wasn't happy with in the kit, which there wasn't much, but one of them was the radiator cooling vent area on the original was very, very plain. In fact, this was the effort of a radiator that was supplied, a very thin vacuum formed radiator that just didn't look anything like the prototype when I looked at photographs. So I decided to scratch build the front end. 
you'll notice that there's a lot of panel and detail that's been added to it. This is actually just plastic card and the rivets and the bolts have been made using this, which is an acrylic resin made by, by Vallejo. It's a plastic putty, which you add through a very fine nozzle, one dot at a time. It sounds worse than it is actually. And it takes about an hour to dry, dry and when it's dried, you can then paint it. The next job, of course, was to get a matching paint. And I found, once again through Vallejo, that this particular colour, US Olive Drab 71.043, was a perfect match for the solar film which I covered the model in. Now, solar text, rather. Solar text, unfortunately, along with solar film, is no longer manufactured, which is a massive shame. It's a superb covering material. It's a fabric covering. It's an iron-on covering. And it's one of the most forgiving coverings that I've ever used. That being said, um, I actually ran out of covering and had to call on and cry for help uh, to some fellow modellers who managed to find a roll of olive green to finish this project off so I'm thankful to them but as you can see I've added some additional detail via the, the fuel tank um, access panels to the engine and I just think that lifts the fuselage a little bit and makes it uh, less drab the other thing that I decided to do very early on when I did start the wings was to add these riblets. They're not on the plan and they're not in the kit, but it was obvious to me, I hope as you can see here, that these are very obvious when the wing's covered. And I knew that would be the case. So I went ahead and I drew them up and I added them to the build. Um, it didn't take a lot of time. They were made in groups in a sandwich through two plywood formers. But I hope they help, and I'm sure they do help, the look of the final covered wing. You'll notice these quirky little features. These were access panels that were made to get to the pulley wheels that actually controlled the surfaces. I haven't put those cables on or the control links on, but they are so obvious on the lower wing and the upper wing that I thought they had to be included and they're also on the tail surface so that got me quite a way on um, I then added some additional detail to the auxiliary tank area on the upper wing and I think you can also see here that the colour match is really very good between the Vallejo paint and the solar text covering that got me to putting the engine in. The engine's quite a tight squeeze. But I think I could have even gone a bit bigger. But never mind. So there's the engine installed. You'll see the exhaust goes down through the lower part of the fuselage. I certainly didn't want uh, a non-scale exhaust sticking out the side of the model. The battery pack is in the front to help with achieving the CG. Even the little servo to drive the carburetor air control is in the front for, this, for the same reason. This is the choke to allow choking of the engine and that's the fine needle valve extension. I will still need to work out how to fill the tank without taking this cover off and also how to start the glue engine without uh, taking the cover off to access the glue plug. I'm working on that at the moment. I've got a couple of ideas how I might achieve that. That gets us that far. And then over the weekend, I started thinking about the rigging, which I hope is fairly obvious when you view it now and you see 
in the late this rigging. Now I'd thought long and hard about that. Now because the wings have to come off, I couldn't use the steel rigging, which is actually a fishing trace, on the tail. It had to be elastic so I could remove it. And I had I had actually worried that it would look uh, incorrect, but I think that actually looks very steel like. It shimmers and catches the light. It is, in fact, this. I picked it up at a haberdashery stand at a market, 0.3 millimeter. It's a beading elastic. Um, a lady there was very helpful. Her husband was very curious wh why I wanted it. And you can see it actually looks like steel on the reel. So I bought everything they had. And yesterday I spent a lot of time making up these rigging wires and marking them in the correct locations uh, on the model. There's still some fettling and painting to do and there's some work to do on the struts, but it's getting there. Few jobs still to do. These were hand painted in the end because it was very difficult to actually um, get any masking tape to adhere to the textured finish. Um, I managed there, but not without uh, a great deal of cursing. But they're not fuel proof, and I need to find a matte fuel proof that I can apply to the roundels on the upper wing, the additional detail here, and also on the lower wing. Somebody asked me on a previous video how I achieved the straight line between the upper covering and the lower covering because this was a feature. It did overlap the colour. Well, the truth is I didn't. I cheated. I got it as close as I could and then I put a masking tape along and painted it the olive gra uh, drab to get achieve the straight lines. I think it's quite effective. So fuel proofing to do, a few little bits and pieces and final detail to add. We'll finish off um, with a word about the installation. The radio gear is tucked away and it's all forward of the CG and that means that the balance point has been virtually achieved, not exactly but virtually achieved without the addition of any dead weight. I will have to add a little, but not much. And to do that, I've used quite chunky, um, heavy servos that are more than a match for anything this model will, will uh, throw at it. But the extra weight at least is working weight. And finally, to finish off, we'll say bye through this little chap, um, I'd originally used the flare Albert, which is massively over scale. And at a swap meet, I picked up this um, resin character, um, unpainted. I've actually painted him up. He was unpainted and he's made out of a very lightweight um, resin, um, which you paint up and he's 1 6 scale, which works out nicely on this model. I hope that video has been informative. I hope you can get flying if you can't get building. And I promise that when I do come to fly this and do the maiden, good or bad, I'll let you know how it goes. So until then, fair skies, light winds, take care.